unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, you would know by now that Perodua has got a new SUV in town and it's called the Arus. And it's not just any SUV, it's a seven-seat car aimed towards families. Yep, and it's also the very first Perodua that goes head-to-head -head against non-national brands. So here we have its closest rival, the Honda BRV. With this, it's clear that Perodua is now playing above well and beyond its small little game. It's now confident enough to go against the big boys. Now finding a second alternative is actually not easy. The Produa Arrows has made the Toyota Rush quite irrelevant. They share the same mechanicals but the Arrows is 20,000 ringgit cheaper. So we have to find cars that are similarly priced or at least MPVs that are similarly priced. So immediately, two very popular MPVs come to mind. The Nissan Grand Luvina and the Toyota Avanza. But let's be honest here, both of those cars are well past their sell-by dates at this point. I mean, a seven-seater with no electronic stability control in 2019? That's just absurd. Plus, if you're thinking about the Proton Exora, well, we'd obviously include them in its lineup. But let's face it, that thing is just too old. It's got too many flaws and it's just plain not good enough. So what we have here is the Toyota Sienta. It's more of an MPV than an SUV, but come on, who would take any of these cars off-roading anyway? What's more important is the ability to ferry people, and I really think the Sienta would put up a very good fight. So in this episode, we'll bring all these three cars with seven adults on board up Gunting Highland to see how they drive. Plus, we'll give you a good idea of which one of these is ideal for you and your family. The SUV, the MPV, or, you know, a cross between the two. So we'll check that out and more. You're watching Driven, powered by the all-new Petronas Primax 95 with ProDrive. Music! These are three drastically different vehicles with distinctly diverse origins. The Prodoa Arus is basically a rebadged model developed by Daihatsu and Toyota, primarily designed for the Indonesian and its neighbouring Asian markets. It uses an old-school ladder frame platform that's shared with the Toyota Avanza and unlike the other two, it's rear-wheel drive. Priced at almost 80,000 ringgit, it's closer to its non-national rivals than Perodua's own MPV, the Alza. Like the Arus, the Honda BRV also has an Indonesian connection, being co-developed by Honda's local R&D divisions in Indonesia and Thailand. It shares a lot of mechanical parts with the Honda City, but the platform underneath it all is a stretch base from the Mobilio MPV, which in turn is an extended version of Honda's A-segment Brio. In Indonesia, the Brio competes against the Daihatsu Ayla, which as you know, is closely related to our own Perodua Asia. The Toyota Sienta is the only model here that's actually sold in Japan, but the version we have here isn't exactly a JDM car. It has been extensively modified to fit the ASEAN market, and the car sold in Malaysia is fully imported from Indonesia, which partly explains its relatively inflated price. It's based on a Toyota B platform, which also underpins the Toyota Vios. So yeah, these three cannot be any more different. One's based on a van, one has ties to a tiny hatchback, and the other is built from a compact sedan. Time to find out which approach is best. What's clear is this. The Arus is the most convincing being an SUV here. It rides tall and handsome, and I especially like these power domes that are on the bonnet, sort of like it's hiding some serious firepower underneath. But what cannot be denied is that the Arus is actually a rebadged version of the Toyota Rush and Daihatsu Terios, because apart from the bumper and the front grille, they're basically the same. But rebadged or not, I think it's a pretty modern looking car. It looks narrow and tall, which it kind of is, and it has a higher ground clearance compared to the Toyota Sienta and Honda BRV. And that means two things. You can drive through flash floods or climb up a curb and park like a boss. 
I'm just gonna lay it all out. The Honda BRV is one weird looking car. It's half MPV, half SUV, and to me, it's all confused. The wheels look way too small, and these tacky plastic cladings that go around them, complete with the Range Rover Evoke-ish tabs at the top, they are a bit try-hard. And the back is worse still. It's so big and round, it does not match the front at all. It's like two completely different cars here. What I hate the most is the stepped window line. Like what? Did the designer sneeze while drawing or something? If anything, the Sienta is weirder still. But instead of looking like a boxy, boring MPV, it actually looks like it just came out of an anime. It has a very quirky JDM flavor to it. You either love it or hate it. For me, while Huffrey thinks I'm weird, but I love it. Come, let's check out the back. Now, at the back, the Sienta looks like it belongs on the streets of Tokyo rather than Kuala Lumpur. And if you want to stand out in the crowd, this car will definitely do it for you. Now, for an MPV, it has a higher ground clearance. The ASEAN model Sientas, they are 25 millimeters higher than the ones that are sold in Japan. And that's to accommodate the local roads. In here, the Iris gets a completely different dashboard because Perdua is of the opinion that the Daihatsu and Toyota equivalent has a rather simplistic looking dashboard and wouldn't meet the demanding Malaysian taste, you know? So it gets a completely different dashboard, complete with this layering and waterfall fountain layout sort of a thing, as well as silver and chrome highlights. If you look to the sides, the door cards have this really interesting diamond pattern to it which look and feel good. There are a few shared components though, like this steering wheel for example, it's taken straight off from the rush as is the instrument cluster back here. Now, over here, this 90 style gear selector is also lifted off the rush and the seats are also taken from the rush. But I think that's a good thing because the seats are easily the most comfortable and most supportive in this group and it even has a slight shoulder support. Now, in terms of fit and finish, I think this is a touch above the Myvi and that is to be expected. Within this group, I think the Arus has a better choice of materials used compared to the Honda BRV and just about on par with the Toyota Sienta. As for the Honda, it's quite literally a bit of a mixed bag. It looks and feels like it was cobbled together with whatever parts that are available. A bit like, you know, Frankenstein's monster. It's got parts from the Honda Brio, others from the Jazz, and the steering wheel here is from a Civic from two generations ago. I mean, nothing wrong with the parts themselves, just that design-wise, they don't really fit. But overall, this is still a pleasant place to be in, with cool touches such as this mesh trim here. And it gets most of the basics right too, with a fairly comfortable seat. And the driving position, spot on. Plastics, of course they're all hard, as are the rest of the cars here, because you can't really expect much in this price range. But the one thing that exposes this car's budget origins are the door cards here. They're just so plain, with scratchy plastics, feels like an entry-level car which, in a way, it sort of is. It's just that here in Malaysia, it's not exactly cheap. Now, if you think the Sienta looks weird on the outside, this dashboard is a different thing altogether again. It has a weird, wild mix of waves and lines that make up this rather strange, multi-layered console. It's either you love it or you hate it. For me, it's so so lah. There's nothing conventional about it. For example, the steering wheel is mounted lower and the instrument panel is above it. So to look at it, you need to look over the steering wheel rather than through it. But one thing I really love is the practicality of this MPV. For example, it has this double glove box over here. There are enough cup holders and there's also an armrest. Although small, better than nothing, right? Coming to the rear seat, the Arza's proper SUV underpinnings really start to affect its practicality appeal. But before that, I wanted to say the seats are actually really comfortable, just like the front. They are very well padded and I think it's going to be adequate or at least very decent for long journeys. And if you're worried about seat adjustability, well, this guy is... It's slidable and if you slide it all the way to the back, like right now, you get the most amount of legroom space. But the same cannot be said for headroom though because of its high floor, it starts to eat into the headroom space a little bit and the raised hump in the middle is actually a small tunnel for the prop shaft to send the drive 
to the rear wheels. There are a few more niggles to this being an old school SUV. The first is of course the ride height itself. I think small children and more elderly people are going to find it a bit of a problem climbing in and contributing to that challenge is the fact that the door is short and it doesn't open as wide. So when you add them all together plus this really high entry point and rather narrow access point, it's going to make it a bit of a challenge but once you're in, it's actually not too bad. I'm about 172 cm and I find that legroom and headroom to be pretty adequate for a, uh, well, adult sized and height like me. So if you're particularly tall, maybe you're going to find it a little bit uncomfortable, but at least you can tuck your feet in like right under the seat. So that's going to make long distance drive a little bit more comfortable. The Honda's middle row seats feel quite similar to the Arrows in terms of legroom and seat adjustability, but the bench is a bit narrower compared to the other two here. Some things are better in the Honda, however. Like headroom, this car is great because of the tall cabin, and the seats themselves are better sculpted for adults. The biggest advantage, however, is this huge rear window here, because it makes the whole cabin feel more airy and spacious, especially compared to the Pro Dua Arrows. At least this small little window kink is good for something. Also playing to the Honda's advantage is this car slant towards being more of an MPV rather than an SUV. Well, actually this is essentially an MPV made to look like an SUV. And here, it's definitely a good thing because the rear doors are a lot bigger and wider than the Perodua. And because this whole car is lower to the ground in the first place, the step up isn't as high. So getting into the last row is a lot easier. And back here, it's the biggest by far in every single way you want to measure it. Shoulder room, head room, leg room, and even the seats themselves are the best padded here. This is a genuine seven-seater, no doubts about it. The Sienta is actually very nice back here with lots of room. The width is as much as the Prodoa Arrows and it has as much headroom as the Honda BRV. On top of that, the floor is also very flat and it has very comfortable seats. Just that it's fabric seats, so parents, you have to be a bit careful. And now onto the Sienta's party piece. It's electric sliding doors. And this opens up to the widest door aperture in this group, which is great news for parents. For example, it's easy for them to put their kids into the car or onto the child seat. And check this out. There's this very low side step over here. You can literally walk in just like that. The final row is not so great. Getting in is easy, but once you are in, you'll realize that it's actually for kids. Overall, it's actually quite tight in here and the seat padding is also very thin. I think it's very difficult for an adult to be comfortable here. So, after considering everything, I really consider this as a 5 plus 2 seater rather than a 7 seater. But before you write the Sienta off, it easily has the biggest, most usable boot in this group. With all seats up, all three have very small load base, barely measuring 200 litres each. Fold the last row, however, it's Advantage Sienta. Instead of the Perodua and Honda's simple tumble-forward seats, which eat up space, the Toyota has clever dive-in seats, which slot neatly under the middle row bench. This gives the Sienta the deepest and tallest load bay by far and together with its lower load lip, it definitely earns its multi-purpose vehicle moniker. Strictly between the Arrows and the BRV, the Honda has a marginally larger, deeper boot area with the seats folded. Okay, so it's finally time for us to drive the Arrows on the road. Now, when it was first announced that the Arrows was going to share the same 1.5 litre engine as the Proto Myvi, a lot of people were asking left, right and centre, Hey, big car, small engine, seven seats eh. Got power one or not, can go up Genting meh. Kai wan siao ah. Tu lah, sama engine dengan Myvi, boleh naik ke tak ni? But before you say that's a valid concern, ask yourself, 
How many times have you seen an Asia or a Viva up in Genting? That's right, plenty of times. And that's usually with a full load of five on board too. And that's only with a one litre three cylinder engine. So I don't really get why it's a big problem for these cars now. But because we are driven and we are Paul Tan and we are comprehensive, we're going to do it anyway. Because why not? The more the merrier, right? So in all three cars, we're going to go up Genting with seven full-grown adults. Apart from the hosts, each car here is fully loaded with our trusty DOP Andrew, Mr. Director Joe, AD Nick, producer Fell, audio man Cumster, and our new PA, Daniel. Three, two, one, action. Okay, with that out of the way, let's try and do this. Okay. Okay, we're moving guys. It's not too bad. It's not fast, but we're moving. The Arus is at a slight disadvantage here. Its 1.5 litre engine only makes 101 horsepower and 133 newton meters of torque. That is slightly down-tuned compared to the Myvi and significantly weaker than the BRV's 119 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque you know, despite having the same 1.5 litre engine size. Even the Sienta has marginally more power at 106 horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque. On the road, the Arus gets from 0 to 100 in 16.1 seconds, just a shade quicker than the heavier Sienta at 16.3 seconds. The lighter and more powerful BRV is by far and away the fastest here, timed at just 12.5 seconds. Yep, 16 seconds is indeed a very long time. But let me tell you this, if you're driving this around town, it feels completely fine, to be honest. Now, the Gunting test. Do I wish that it has more power? Of course I do. Does it feel like it's effortless going uphill? Uh, obviously not, you can feel it struggling a little bit. But at the end of the day, you have to remember it's a seven-seat SUV. And when you're driving around town with a car full of family and friends, the last thing you want to do is drive aggressively. Remember, slow and steady always wins the game, or rather gets you there safely. The same goes for the gearbox, a four-speed automatic. Yes, it's old, but when you're driving around town, it is completely fine. Gear shifts feel a little bit slow, but on the bright side, it feels solid and the shifts feel smooth. At the end of the day though, I really think I prefer a good automatic gearbox compared to a CVT. But you know, that's personal preference. Going up steep hills does reveal the gearbox's widely spaced gear ratios. And it always has to shuffle between too low revs and no torque, or in this case, too high revs and a really screaming engine. And to be honest, it can get quite a bit annoying. Plus, when you're driving this on a highway, and if you were to maintain it at the uh, 110 km per hour, for example, the RPM would hover at 3,500 RPM. The other two cars with the CVT maintain a much lower rev, just above 2,000 RPM. Quite a big difference, really. The Honda performs much, much better than the Arus, and that's a fact. There's nothing subjective about this at all. It's just faster and more responsive at all speeds. Sure, the performance is slightly blunted compared to the same engine in the lighter Honda City and Jazz, but for this purpose, I think it's great. Of course, it's nowhere near being fast, but in this group, in this context, it's the least likely to be called underpowered. Having said that, it still struggles to go up steep hills, especially with the full load on board as we do have right now. Here, however, the CVT does a very good job giving you enough power on demand without having to vary the engine speeds too much. It's also the only car here to have a proper sports mode for the gearbox, which I think is far more useful than the manual sequential mode in the Toyota Sienta. I mean, how often are you going to use that anyway? Overall, I still don't think it's quite as linear or as natural feeling as I would have liked, but as far as CVTs go, this one's alright. They are far worse out there. From the get-go, the Sienta has a big disadvantage, which is its weight. It is 100 kilograms heavier than the BRV and 50 kilograms heavier than the Arus, and it's likely because of the sliding electric doors. 
So right from the start, the Sienta was never going to feel powerful. Uh, driving up and down these uh, mountainous roads, the gap in performance is getting bigger and bigger. But the combination of the smooth engine and the CVT feels quite good actually. Um, I think in terms of performance, it is okay for a car this size. Uh, it feels very natural compared to the uh, Honda BRV, although it is not as powerful. But if you consider driving in uh, town or in stop and go traffic, the uh, drivetrain is smooth. On to handling. Now, this is where the Sienta claws back some ground, especially with its tried and tested sedan platform. Now, other than the fact that you're sitting a bit higher and uh, the steering is a bit slower in terms of response, you kind of feel like you're driving a Vios. So that means it is boring to drive a little bit, but it also means that the body roll is quite manageable. Uh, it is not as bad as the Arus. I kind of expected it to be worse than this, but um, it is quite all right. Taking corners in the Arus, you just know that it's not designed to do this. When you're driving on the streets, the steering wheel can feel a little bit too light, so it requires a lot of uh, adjustments, and that can be tiresome when you're going on a long distance drive. And conversely, when you go into a corner, it can load up pretty well and turns the car fine. But that's not to be confused with steering feel though, because this unit here is pretty vague as with all Toyota RX. But what you really feel though, is the body roll, because this thing rolls like a boat. Here's where the Porodua's ladder frame platform and tall right height really show. It feels a little bit more detached, loose even when you compare it to the other two. Even the brakes feel a little bit mushy and underserved, and I don't quite like that. Hafriz the other day was driving this car and he said that this car reminded him of the Kambara which he used to drive and own like many many moons ago and I kind of agree with him on that. As you'd expect, the Honda shines the best here. You sit the lowest of all and the steering is very direct, very sharp, it feels the most like a normal car driving experience. It also has the best tightest body control by far in this group with the least amount of body roll. Without having seven people on board, this car can be actually fairly fun being hustled through the corners. I mean, you definitely shouldn't because this is still a big, tall and heavy family car. But if you insist on having a big MPV for this price range but still want to have fun behind the wheel, this is as close as you're gonna get. The drawback to all this, of course, is that the BRV has a rather firm ride, especially when there's a full load on board. When the suspension is compressed like this, the ride can get a little bit unsettled and can be fairly uncomfortable for those sitting in the back. Right up front though, it's much better. Now as for absolute ride comfort, the Sienta is really the best one here. Its damping, for example, uh, for an MPV is actually uh, quite spot on, uh, whether you're driving alone or with passengers. And the thing is, when you're driving alone, uh, it's quite close to the Honda, and if you're having passengers on board, they would feel less disturbed by the uh, ruts and bumps in the Toyota. And the harshest ride in this trio goes to the Arrows. It's the bounciest one of all here, which is not surprising because, you know, it's got a ladder frame platform and it has a live rear axle setup. Unlike the Honda, the Arrows feels a little bit more comfortable with load than without load. Sort of like the suspension was made to carry heavy loads and in driving it alone. It's a bit weird, but it's almost like a suspension tuning of a pickup truck. Speaking of suspension tuning, Proda told us that the suspension was made to be a little bit more stiff than the Daihatsu Terios in Indonesia. And the reason being is that it would suit our road conditions slightly better, but having driven it around Malaysia, especially with this pockmarked roads along Genting Islands, um, I'm inclined to disagree. I think, personally, I would have a car that has a little bit more body roll, but conversely is more comfortable to drive every day. And in case you're wondering, the Toyota Rush that's sold in Malaysia has the exact same tuning as the Arus. It was made clear to us that the Rush and the Arus is 100% mechanically identical because after all, they're both assembled at Prodoa's plant in Rawa. And lastly, refinement. Both Honda and Prodoa have an awful track record when it comes to this department. So it'll be interesting to see which one of these two is the loudest in this group. Ready? 
Yeah. It's a no contest. It's this. It's the BRV. On full throttle, the Honda BRV is by far away the loudest, recording a maximum noise level of 79 dB. This compares against just 74 dB for the Produa Arus, while the Sienta was the quietest of the lot at 71 dB. The Honda is again the loudest at a steady cruise of 110 km per hour. It recorded a noise level of 75 dB, and this compares to just 72 dB for the Sienta and just 71 dB for the Produa Arus. This proves one thing, Honda, you've got to start putting more soundproofing in all your cars because this is getting ridiculous. The BRV is louder at a steady cruise compared to the Arrows at full throttle. How is that even possible? And it's not just the engine either because remember, this has a CVT. So when you're cruising around, the revs are kept very low. It's really a combination of everything, the engine, to the wind noise and especially the loud road noise that makes this car almost unbearable to drive. To me, this is the BRV's single biggest, most glaring flaw. As these vehicles are meant to be everyday family cars, fuel economy is a make or break factor. We tested all three with the all-new Petronas Premax 95 with ProDrive, a new formulation that reduces friction and cleans your engine, giving you a smoother, more responsive and efficient drive. Try it out for yourself. It's available at all Petronas stations today. In our real-world fuel test, the Prodor Arus ended up with an average fuel consumption figure of 12.5 km per litre. Despite being heavier, having a more efficient CVT gives the Toyota Sienta a slight advantage at 12.9 km per litre. The Honda BRV proved to be the most economical in this group with 13.7 km per litre. Coupled with its extra performance, that is a big win for the Honda. Before we drop our final verdict, as usual, we are going to critique each other's cars. Okay, here's the thing I don't really fancy. The car does not come with LED DRLs, just like the Prodorum IV. I mean, it's 2019, they should come as standard, right? And then, see, most rear windows end at about here. But with the arrows, you can do this. It goes all the way down, almost. Now, while I appreciate the integrated smart tag, the thing is, senang masuk susah keluar, and the uh, auto start stop, uh, which is part of the ecosystem, gets a bit annoying. So you'd have to turn it off every time before you start driving. Also, the Proda Arrows comes with an updated ASA 2.0 system and. AEB which works up to 80 km per hour with pedestrian detection. And what you see here is an integrated DVR system. Not bad, huh? Finally, this car also comes with a seatbelt reminder for all seven seats. So, if your kids don't wear the seatbelt at the back, you will know instantly, remember, safety first. The other thing is that uh, this car comes with six airbags as standard, whereas the BRV only has two and the Sienta only has three. So, what I really don't like about the BRV is the way it looks, especially from the rear end. I mean, I'm sorry, I tried to give it some time to grow on me, but it hasn't, and I get it. It's, it doesn't have its own design from the ground up. It's based off the Mobilio, which is, again, based off a Brio. So, it has a very disproportionate looking rear end. So, I don't like it, I'm sorry. But, what I do like is this. So, this roof rails is actually functional and holds up to 30 kilograms of weight. So, you can do stuff like skydiving, snowboating, ski boating, gymming, bouldering, and glamping, whatever you want. As long as it's outdoor activities, this is gonna serve your purposes better because the Arus, the roof rails on that thing is just aesthetics. Up front, the BRV gets halogen lights, which is lame, but the rest get LED lights. And I like the fact that it comes with LED DRLs. And fun fact, Malaysia is the only market in the region to get this, because Honda Malaysia knows we love LED DRLs. But 
Toradora doesn't, which is ironic. In here, this steering wheel is actually lifted off the Honda Civic FD from 15 years ago. I mean, back then I was still in high school. Come on, Honda. Also, another thing, this head unit is missing physical volume controls. And for you to do that, you have to press home screen. And it's only accessible here, which is super lame. The other place you can do it is here. But, I mean, come on. Man, yeah. Right, the Sienta. Call it weird, call it odd, ugly, whatever you want. But see all those black lines over it? That's actually inspired by jungle trekking shoes. Not this. Yeah. One of these, of all things. Like, why? Moving on. Next, the DRLs. You'd expect them to be like, right up there, right? But no, they're down here. So you look like a douchebag who drives with the fog lights always on. Yep, this car makes you look like a douchebag. On a positive note, this is the only car here with rear disc brakes instead of old school drums. If you buy this car in Japan, you'd have the gear lever up here to clear up space at the bottom of the cabin. But you know what, because this car was designed in Indonesia, we have it down there because they prefer a six-speed manual gearbox instead. Now, I don't know about you, but I would prefer a much more practical cabin instead of a manual MPV. And one last thing, the Sienta has a 50-50 split bench right down the centre. So if you sitting in the middle, tough luck. So thanks for watching this far. Now it's time to find out which of these three is the best. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of our toughest decisions yet because each one of the cars here are so different, man. And all of them have their own set of pros and cons. One thing's for sure though, there's no clear winner, right? And of course, we don't do half-baked cop-out verdicts here on Driven. So, each of us will make our own case. Right. So, coming into this review, I think all of us were very easily convinced that this guy is going to straight up win the review. I mean, look at it. It's super impressive on paper. But it's not quite straightforward like that because after having extensively tested this, three cars back to back, the Arus starts to show some of its flaws. And the biggest one is of course, in the way it drives. It just feels super old school. Yeah. And in a way it kind of is because, you know, you cannot deny the fact that its ladder frame chassis is more used for heavy duty applications like pickup trucks, more so than a comfortable family car. Yeah, but it's not all bad though. In this review, we find out that it's very refined and the build quality and the creature comforts in there is superb. Yeah. And there's also the safety point. The car has the most airbags here and it also has active safety features. So, yeah. And I think it looks great too, right? Between these three cars, I know which one I'd rather be seen in. Yeah. And it's definitely not the Honda. And it's not the Toyota either. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's been driving that. Uh, no. Anyway, but what about the BRV? Well, it's dynamically excellent. It's the fastest here, it's the most economical, and it's easily the best handler by far. But it's just a bit too loud, you know? Yeah. And it's hard for me to look over that. Yeah, but you know, all things considered, I think the BRV does the best job at ferrying seven people and seven adults at that. Yep, the Honda just nails most of the basics, right? It's just that beyond that, there's nothing extra to it. There's nothing fancy here. Unlike the Toyota Sienta, I mean, it's unique inside out. It has uh, electric doors that are cool. It has the biggest uh, space in the boot, the smoothest CVT, and the ride comfort is also very, very good. So, yeah, but it is very, very slow though. And those plus two seats, for kids only. Yeah, slow, right? Took him an eternity to get up to Genting. Uh, you lost to the Arrows, uh, that's saying a lot. And obviously, there's plenty of caveats to throw around, but I think it's time to call in the second runner-up. And that would be the Toyota Sienta. I mean, it's ultimately the smallest car here. It's also the most expensive. But if I'm looking for a spacious MPV for my small little family, and if I put away the issues with the two small seats, I would seriously consider the Sienta. Yep. Fair enough. So now it boils down to the Honda BRV and the Prodo Arus. This so, is a close one. Yeah, close, right? But I think all of us at this juncture have agreed that the Arus is the best car of the three. 
simply because you cannot argue with its value proposition. I mean, for 79,000 ringgit, you get so much more. And the fact that it's got so many active and passive safety features, just as a family car, is simply commendable. But if you are serious in getting the Arus, our recommendation is to actually look beyond the spec sheet, go to the showroom, test drive the car, feel the handling, try out the right comfort to see whether you like it or not. Because overall, yes, it is a very good car, but we must not forget that it still has flaws. Yep, so that leaves the BRV in second place. To me, it offers the best of both worlds, MPV and SUV in a single package. It's just that next to the Arus, I can't get over the fact that you get so much less for more money. Yeah, so that basically wraps up our comparison. Do you agree with our conclusion or do you disagree? Whatever the case, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. For now, thank you so much for watching Driven, powered by the all-new Hatronas Premax 95 with ProDrive. Till next time, bye-bye. Arus, who's Rose with? Rose! Rose! Arus! There's nothing conventional about this car. First, the steering wheel is down low, and then the dashboard instrument cluster is on top. So when you look at it, instead of looking like this, you look like this! Three, two, one, go. Nah, um, just that. This time, I'm in the shade, and you guys are outside, so just milk it for a while. Yeah. And now, for the theaters, party piece! Don't get off the version of the Toyota Rush and Daihatsu Sienta. Help! Oh, I locked it! <laughs> oh, oh, no! <laughs> Seatbelts, people! Cut! <laughs>